Hello, Jim Schwimmer here. Welcome to today's vlog. Today, I want to continue a subject that I've been talking about for several recent vlogs, but one in particular, the possibility of uh, growing or the birth of a silent black majority. For those of you who don't know, who weren't around at that time because you hadn't been born and I'm an old guy, but the Nixon election, the 68 election, about a silent majority. That was Nixon's catchphrase, a silent majority, meaning that you'd have all these noises from radicals and complaints from radicals and coverage in the news media. Meanwhile, there was a silent majority of people who just get up every day, go to work, don't complain, who never get consulted. We don't hear from them, but Nixon, thanks to his mantra of silent majority, the nation, especially Democrats, certainly heard from them in 1968, in the 68 election. So I want to go on from that because I think, as I said a couple of days ago, that it's an exaggeration, to be honest, to say silent black majority because that number obviously is not going to come to fruition anytime soon. I just use that to key it to the phrase silent majority from the Nixon years, which could have included a lot of black people. It wasn't a, a white thing, despite uh, attempts by a lot of liberals to paint it that way. But I do see a growing swell of support for Donald Trump. Whether that translates into support for the Republican Party will remain to be seen. We'll see what happens after Trump leaves office. But there are indications, and that's what I want to talk about today. I just want to show some articles, some videos, just evidence of these black voters who are finally, in my opinion, coming to realize or waking up or getting woke, if you want to use the phrase our liberal friends use. And by the way, I'm going to talk about my own people, the Jews, a lot of us getting woke. Well, I got woke a long time ago, but that's going to be a separate vlog. I'm thinking perhaps the next vlog. I want to focus on black voters today, but I want to start first with a uh, news report, a suspect wanted for burning of 3rd Minneapolis police precinct arrested in Colorado. One of a group of people who torched a police precinct in Minneapolis, he fled to Colorado. They caught him. But what I want you to look at is the picture. It's, well, if that's a, a Black Lives Matter black person, you could have fooled me. He looks white to me. And well, of course he is. And that's the point that people who have been saying that a movement of white people, these Antifa people, are hijacking these black protests or any kind of a protest for their own purposes. I think that is your proof right there. So I wanted to mention that and it's going to lead me into today's subject because if you are a black person, is that what you want? Do you want white people coming in and torching police stations? And now on to the examples I want to show you, starting with a video. Here is a screenshot from the tweet containing the video. This is important, so pay attention to this. To all of you tolerant liberals who displayed your wokeness by justifying rioting while sitting on your fat, comfortable asses, totally insulated from the damage, this is what you supported. This is on you. Congratulations, you despicable monsters. What is this person, Matt Walsh, talking about? Well, you can watch this video. A black woman, a mother, with several children. She just wanted to get food for her children. She wanted to go to the market in her neighborhood, get food for her children, didn't want to steal it, wanted to pay for it. This is what she found, and you can hear what she has to say about it. Watch the video, then come back. Look at this. Every grocery store looks like this. Every grocery store looks like this. Everything is either on the floor, 
Look at this. Can't even get no fucking food for my kids, G. Look at this. Came in the store to try to buy something. Cause I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a thief. Look at this. In my hood, can't even get no food for my kids. Babies need milk. Can't even get nothing for my kids, bro. I feel like an animal, and black people made me feel like an animal. Y'all did this to us. Look at this. Look at this. Look at the store. Look at this. But we, we, we this, this is what we're fighting for. This is honoring George Floyd. People who already couldn't feed their kids, now they really can't feed their kids. Look at this. I am so devastated right now. I am so devastated right now, G. This is not okay. For us to have to live like this, we do stupid shit like this all the time. And we so black proud. We so black and proud that we ain't gonna never be honest and be real about what's really going on. Y'all are so wrong for this. You came in your neighborhood and fucked up your shit. I'm not a thief. I'm not coming in this store and stealing nothing. And ain't nobody gonna turn me into no animal or make me feel like a thief. Y'all let them white folks send y'all off once again. Look at all this shit on the floor. Look at all this on the floor. Everything. Everything's on the floor. Tissue. We couldn't even find tissue less than two months ago and now it's on the floor. Look at it. Meanwhile, we got plenty of fruits and vegetables. I'm not finna pick through this shit. Welcome back. I don't know about you, but I find that just heartbreaking and I find it especially despicable that these looters and rioters are not thinking about that, not thinking about the people who live in that neighborhood who want to feed their children who now cannot because of these thugs, number one, and number two, these white Antifa jokers. Are you proud of yourself? Are you proud of what is happening here? Because you're participating in that too. Don't claim that you're supporting black people and you want to help black people when you do things like this, whether you are black or white, if you do things like that. So that is one example in a negative light, unfortunately, this poor woman. But I hope she is realizing what the great society and democratic policies and liberalism and the movements that they are spawning, the left, this is what it does. So I hope she is going to become now part of this growing black awakening. I guess that's what I'll have to call it, a black awakening for want of a better term. Now here is a positive story. All these attacks on police officers, all this hatred of the police, defund the police. Look at this. Tennessee deputy thanks two black women for buying him breakfast at Cracker Barrel. Quote, BLM, that's Black Lives Matter, but so does yours, unquote. And from the police officer, this is what he tweeted. His name is Jody McDowell. I want to thank the two sweet black ladies who paid for my breakfast this morning. While waiting for a transport to be completed, I decided to have breakfast at a Cracker Barrel near the Nashville airport. I received this note from them. And there you can see the note. BLM, Black Lives Matter, but so does yours. Thank you for your service, breakfast paid. I just think that is wonderful. As heartbreaking as that preceding video that I showed you was, I think this is just so positive and comforting. So I had to share that. And now we're getting to another headline here. Quote, very compassionate, unquote, Ahmed Arbery's mother describes visit with Trump. 
The mother of Ahmed Arbery reportedly described President Donald Trump as, quote, very receiving, unquote, and, quote, very compassionate, unquote, during their White House meeting on Tuesday. Wanda Cooper Jones was one of several invited to meet with Trump before he signed an executive order dealing with the issue. Arbery was shot and killed by two white men while jogging near Brunswick, Georgia in February. That kind of spoils the narrative, doesn't it? That's my first point about Trump doesn't care about black people, how cold he is. Obviously, Ahmed Arbery's mother doesn't feel that way. And also, she supports supporting the police, not defunding the police. So that is another point to keep in mind. And she reminds me of the Detroit City Councilwoman Remember, she met with Trump in the Oval Office, complimented him on promoting the hydroxychloroquine or something like that. I don't remember what it was, but she credited him with her recovering from COVID-19. She got castigated by the Democratic Party back in I, well, definitely Detroit, but maybe the whole state of Michigan, they wanted to excommunicate her just about from the Democratic Party. They said there would be consequences. I hope she is doing well. Now we get to uh, an issue that is especially important to black people where they are starting to realize that on this issue, the issue is abortion. The Democratic Party is not their friend. Number one, it should be obvious, every black child aborted today is one fewer black vote 18 years from now. How promoting abortion is supposed to help black people, I don't know. But that's the line from the Democrats. But black people increasingly are starting to see the contradiction there. They are starting, as I described about our Democratic friends, they are starting to get woke on this issue. I'm going to show you some examples of what I'm talking about, starting with this article. Women handcuffed, cited while praying outside NYC, New York City, Planned Parenthood the same week of George Floyd protests. Two women were seen being handcuffed by police on the sidewalk outside a New York City Planned Parenthood abortion clinic late last month, and they're calling it a double standard since it happened the same week that thousands gathered in crowds to protest the police-related death of George Floyd. Pro-life advocates Bevelyn Beatty, and remember her, okay, remember her name because I'm going to bring her up again. Pro-life advocates Bevelyn Beatty and Edmi Chavon co-founders of At The Well Ministries, were handcuffed May 30 on the sidewalk outside the Margaret Sanger Planned Parenthood Center in Manhattan for allegedly violating Mayor Bill de Blasio's coronavirus-related social distancing guidelines. Quote, this is a clear statement of their bias now. It's blatant now, unquote, Beatty told Fox News, noting the crowded Floyd protest. Quote, it's true. Truly biased against Christians, against pro-life abolitionists, unquote. I will just jump in here and just add, he is also, I don't think it's just Christians. He's either anti-Semitic too or he's just anti-religion because he also went after a Jewish congregation for holding services. He had the police department or some city organization weld shut the metal gate to a playground in a Jewish neighborhood where Jewish kids play. So I'll have to say that maybe in his favor, in a strange way, that Mayor de Blasio is an equal opportunity religion hater. Atheist. I would have to guess that he's an atheist. But getting back to these two women, these two black anti-abortion, pro-life women handcuffed for not maintaining social distancing rules at the same time that thousands and thousands of George Floyd protesters and rioters and looters are allowed to ignore social distancing and law and order in general to their heart's content. 
Planned Parenthood called the police on the two women who were issued citations for failure to disperse and given a September court date, Live Action News reported. It happened as the Big Apple reportedly has seen a spike in murders and shootings amid the looting and protests following Floyd's death. So you have these murders, this increase in murders and shootings, and you have the looting and you have the rioting. But apparently the New York Police Department, at least under orders from Mayor de Blasio, they have nothing better to do than to handcuff people protesting abortion in front of Planned Parenthood. Quote, we're black women, but we do not support Black Lives Matter because they're hand in hand with Planned Parenthood that kills African American babies, unquote, BD told Fox News. Quote, they're fraudulent hypocrites, and I believe all lives matter because God created them. There are thousands of George Floyds that die every day in their mother's womb, and it's just as unjust as when he died at the hands of that police officer, unquote. Quote, arrest the abortionists. They're in the building, unquote, Shavanis said. Quote, churches are closed in New York City, but this place is open, unquote. Yeah, churches and synagogues are closed and the abortion clinics are open, probably running full tilt, killing black babies. And that's the party that most black voters support. I don't understand it, but there it is. And as I said, there are more and more black voters who don't understand it any more than I do. Now you'll recall I told you a few minutes ago to remember one of those two women, Bevelyn Beattie. Here she is again, a conservative black woman schools a white liberal woman on history. I'll just play the video and then come back. I would be in the same position you're in, so I'm not even mad at you, baby. I'm so feeling like a fake news. This is the thing. I know people don't like Trump. I understand that. But let me tell you something. If I had to pick between him and Joe Biden, I'm not voting in Joe Biden. You want to see? You want to see a bunch of black people go to jail by the next four years? Put Joe Biden. Watch what happens. You want to see black men get killed substantially? Like, they, like you've never seen before, put Joe Biden in and watch what happens. These Democrats, and I'm sorry to say this, I'm not trying to be racist, but they hate black people. These are the same people who have fought to keep slavery in. These are the same people who built the KKK. These are the same people who hated us from the beginning. The Republican Party is the party of the blacks. Blacks free, the Republican Party is the only party that the black people actually assisted in finding. But all of that history has been torn away. People say, oh, there was this big switch. There was never a big switch. The union, the union won because we had grown in the industrial area era. So we were able to get trains and get supplies back to our soldiers while the Confederate was still riding horses. They were not able to get supplies back fast enough, right? So what happened was once slavery was abolished in the South, the people in the South could lo no longer make their money from slaves. They had to move to the North to work in the industry to produce. And so the people in the North that already had established themselves in the industry moved to the South. And so that's where it was a transfer of people coming from the South to the North and people coming from the North to the South. There was never a big switch. So so the same Democrats who hated black people from the beginning are the same ones who hate us now. And they use our cause. How did Black Lives Matter turn into something about LGBTQ? When blacks really don't support that. We're concerned about that. We're really not about that. Not only that, we don't support abortion. We're about working. This is the black culture. We ain't ever been about that. Not only that, we're not about feminism. No, we're not. Black women marry their husbands and respect their husbands. That's what we on. We're not on this, oh, I'm, I do what I want. We don't no. do that. That's not our community, and you would understand. I know you understand what I'm saying. We don't do that. But yet these people are hijacking our movement, and the Democratic Party, they're trying to hijack our stuff. No. Welcome back. And what you just saw is something that I am starting to see more and more. And as I'm saying in this vlog, I think it could be a trend, which is 
black people getting tired of being lectured to by white people about uh, racism and about how they are supposed to think. You just heard and saw that woman, Bevelyn Beatty. Here is one more. This will be the last video for today. Let me set it up with a tweet. The man with a powerful voice asked protesters from medical community about which Black Lives Matter. The chilling moment is when he asked them a question they all knew the answer to, but couldn't get themselves to answer. Here's the video. Black Lives Matter or just some black lives? The black lives killed by black men matter, right? Yes? The black babies killed in the abortions clinics matter, right? Thought so. The black, the black officers killed by that bastard in, in Minnesota, that matters too, right? Okay. But the black babies that are killed in the abortion clinics don't matter, do they? Medical people. Uh, do their lives matter? Does the future of our black babies matter? Huh? What's up? What's up? Awful quiet now, aren't they? Uh-huh. It's okay if we kill them in the womb, right? But you have a problem when we, you don't seem to really have a problem when we kill them on the streets. Yes, well, we know they're the same is issue. If we, don't, if we don't respect the lives of our unborn children enough to save them and fight for them, our lives mean nothing once we're born. You all have a good day. That's it for today. Thanks, as always, for stopping by. Thumbs up if you like this video. Share with anybody you think would also like the video. If you have comments, there's a comment section below the video. A good place also for questions, suggestions for future topics. I would love more subscribers, so if you could subscribe, that would be great. But most of all, come back and see me again. I look forward to seeing all of you again. And until I do see all of you again, bye.